Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the RabbitMQ prefetch count. So, um, if you're on this page, you probably you you're, you probably found your way here because you're you're searching. You're just trying to look up what the RabbitMQ prefetch count is. Maybe you saw it referenced somewhere or something, and you or you just wanted to know how to tune it or what the best way to tune it is. Maybe you're searching for something related. But um, any case, this is what we're going to cover today. Um, I'm not going to actually demo anything. Um, I'm just going to talk about what it is and how you might want to tune it, show some code examples. So this is my document where I answered that exact same question. And um, yeah, so the, the quick answer, I put it here at the top. The RabbitMQ prefetch count is a variable that limits the number of unacknowledged messages that can be consumed. This is used for QoS, and it is defined using the prefetch count variable. It is unlimited by default. So, um, yeah, ba basically, it's, it has this one variable. Now, they're actually internally, I believe it's actually two separate variables that it's saved into. But um, what's exposed is this one variable, or at least that's how I understand it. And we'll, we'll get into that. But um, and it depends how you define it, and it has to do with um, um, what we'll, we'll, we'll show you anyways. But um, ba basically, the, the idea of what the prefetch count is, is um, so, so it's a variable that limits um, unacknowledged messages, which are basically just messages that have been sent out to a consumer. So let's say your broker, um, say a, a message is published out to the consumer, to the uh, broker, and the consumer consumes it. So um, once the consumer consumes it, and say they're still processing it, or they haven't sent an acknowledgement back saying, hey, this this is this is processed, um, you can take it off the queue or whatever, it's still sitting there as unacknowledged. So in case that consumer dies or something happens to it and um, you know the connection closes, the broker will be like, oh, looks like they died and they hadn't acknowledged it. We better uh, send this out to somebody else. And it'll, you know, it'll let someone, someone, some uh, other consumer consume that message. So that's what an unacknowledged message is, basically. And um, this variable just limits the number of unacknowledged messages that can be consumed. Otherwise, like a, a single consumer could theoretically just like pull all of your, um, you know, pull all of your, pull everything from the queue down, e e even though it hasn't acknowledged a single one. And um, e you could just have problems there. So it's, it's, it's something that you might want to uh, tune. So, um, yeah, not setting this variable can result in a large number of unact messages. Um, you know, this value will have no effect effect if auto acts are enabled on the client, which um, makes a lot of sense. And we're going to actually cover that when we go over the code examples in uh, some of our future videos. But basically, an auto act is where the uh, consumer, as soon as it uh, consumes a message, it, it, uh, it basically acknowledges that message immediately. It doesn't like wait to process it or do it, anything like that. And um, it's basically a thing in your code. When you um, when you process a message, um, and we'll, we'll see that when we get into the actual code in a, a separate video, not in this video. But um, ba basically, when you consume uh, a message, you have the you can uh, manually act the message, or you can just set you can just set a parameter for the the, the function call that says it, it just tells it to auto act. So anything that c gets consumed is automatically acknowledged, no matter what. Um, now, if you don't use auto acts, you're going to have to remember to act it. And if you don't remember, that can run, that can cause another issue, um, which we will discuss on another day. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's basically what the prefetch count is. There's more we can say about it. So, yeah, generally when you set the prefetch count, um, it's in channel. Uh, you, you'd, you'd say channel and call the function uh basic uh, underscore QoS and set prefetch count equal to uh, whatever you want it to be. In this case, I'm just saying one as an example. So um, th th there's a bunch of options that you should probably be aware of so that, that this explanation here isn't the whole story. And um, so you, you actually have what's called channel prefetch count and uh, consumer prefetch count. Um, yeah, so it can be set on a channel or connection basis or on a per consumer basis. Um, and this is controlled using the global variable, which is optional. You don't have to pass that. You don't have to set it as a default value. Anyways, um, so if you set global to false, and, and this is what I said uh, previously when I, when I said there are two separate variables that, that track prefetch, there's, there's the actual prefetch the channel prefetch count and the consumer prefetch count. So even though you have this one variable called uh, prefetch underscore count, and that's that's the prefetch count, it's uh, 
that's not it that's one variable but it actually you can use that variable to control you know the channel prefetch count or the consumer prefetch count and you do that by setting global equals to false or global equals to true so if you set global equals to false um, you're setting that prefetch count will apply to uh, individual consumers and um, if it's true, you know, it's shared between all consumers on that channel. So um, you, you, that might seem like a strange way to do it, but the interesting thing is you can actually set both of those values. So it's not like you, you're only setting one or the other. Um, it, it is kind of a strange way to do things, um, but um, it, it might, be, might seem a little bit um, counterintuitive. But uh, anyway, or at least it does to me. Maybe it seems totally normal to everybody else. But... Um, but, but yeah, so um, you, you can actually set both of these. You can set the channel prefetch count and the consumer prefetch count um, at the same, uh, um, ba basically independently of each other. So what you would do is you basically call, um, so the same function that we called here, basic QoS, you, you can call it, um, I have an example of uh, setting global equals to false and global equals to true. And then here we, we have a little code snippet where you can actually call that function twice. And you might think you would be, Normally, you'd think you'd be uh, overwriting that variable. Um, like if you, if, you know, if you set the value of the variable uh, twice, you're going to overwrite that value, right? That's the exact same function call twice. But um, it's basically you're setting the value for the prefetch count. But when you say true, um, it looks like I typoed this in my. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Um, yeah, I keep finding things that I have to go back and fix. I, I have to proofread my documents a little bit better. Um, so hopefully by the time you watch this video, I will have, uh, fixed that in anyways. Um, yeah, so, so you set it to uh, false here and uh, it looks like I have another typo in there. That's, that's terrible. Any, anyways, um, set, um, yeah, you, you, you set it to false. Um, and you, yeah, so you're, you're basically setting the value of, uh, of this variable and you, you would think, um, you, you you think if you set it's another variable you you just name the variable something else like like if it were me I would say I would I would literally just name the variable what it is I would say it channel cons prefetch count and consumer prefetch count they'd be separate variables so it'd be kind of clear what you're setting here it looks like you're setting the exact same variable but um, when when you set uh, false versus true it will um, it's it's gonna actually control a different count or I I assume it's a separate variable internally. That's not really exposed to uh, people writing the code for this. So um, there's so there's that, and uh, so you you'd want to know what you want to actually set the prefix count to. So I mean, basically, if you've come here, you're not you, you probably don't like the next question after what is the prefix count is um you know why does it matter for me and um, what should you actually set it to. So um, so ba basically, uh, larger values improve message delivery rate because uh, it allows more messages to just be sent out to a consumer without having to wait for an act for each individual message. Um, so the more you can just push out there, the more th the more uh, the throughput you have and the, the more, you know, it, it basically just helps, imp helps performance or at least the delivery rate. And communication between the uh, consumer and broker um, will decrease. So when I say communication will decrease that just means fewer messages have to be sent back and forth there's less overhead and it's it's just a little bit better now uh smaller values um smaller values uh could hurt performance um there are reasons to set smaller values um they may be better for larger systems like where you have a, a lot of different consumers um and they're better for keeping an even distribution of messages, so that that's why it might make a huge difference. Now, if you only had like a couple hosts, um, it, it it wouldn't be as as big of an advantage. And I have a little table further down here that I'll get into, but um, yeah, so uh, it can help prevent overworking a single consumer. So um, you know, good good thing to uh, you know if you don't want one one consumer to just be overloaded with a ton ton of messages and make sure things are kind of divided up evenly. Um, that's something to take into account. And um, yeah, you can just uh, set it to one and uh, send one message to a worker at a time. That's kind of a really good way to make sure things are divided up evenly. So yeah, general, general guidelines on how to set it. If you have a few consumers with fast processing, 
um, like the message is pa- processed really quickly and there's only a few consumers, you're probably just going to want to use a larger value because they're all going to, you know, they're all normally just going to get processed really fast anyways. And uh, you only have a few consumers, so it's not like you're really working on um, job. You, you don't have to, to work to divide it up that much. Um, and so, so the next one is uh, if you have, say, many consumers with fast processing time still, you, you might use a smaller value. Now, if you have really long processing times, um, you, you, you might want to think about just setting the value to one, which, which is what we, were, we uh, mentioned briefly over here. Basically, um, you know, if, if you set it to one, you can just, it kind of makes sure things are split up evenly. Um, and, and that, that, that kind of makes sense in that scenario. So that, that's pretty much it for that. Um, let's see here. Did I have anything else? Yeah, I think I had a few points up here I should probably cover. Um, so the default value for the global variable is set to false in most APIs. Um, and I, I believe this is just, um, so, so it's an AMQP thing. Um, it's, it's basically, um, so, so the, the, it, it could be defined either way, I think, but I think in practice, most often you're going to see it set to false in most APIs that, that use this. Um, let's see, setting the prefetch count on a per channel basis can be slow, especially on clusters, which is kind of what we've kind of the idea we've already gone over. It often makes sense to turn it off. Um, And you can do this by setting the global variable, setting global to false. Um, If global is set to false, then the limit will be applied to each individual consumer on the channel. If global is set to true, then the limit will be shared between all consumers on that channel. All right, so so that's pretty much it. Um, Yeah, so if you didn't want to watch this video, you can, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be embedding this video on this page, but if you didn't want to watch this video, you could just uh, quickly read through this. Um, like, like personally, I prefer just qu- reading through a document, and this kind of gives you all the information, um, you know, in an easily digestible format with little tables and code snippets and stuff. You probably pick this up a little bit faster just by um, just by reading through this rather than watching this video. But I'm doing the video just so people have their choice of uh, formats. So um, any case, yeah, so if you found this useful, um, give me a, a, a thumbs up, hit the like, like button. Um, if you have any comments, questions, criticisms, anything you want to say, I want to hear what you want to s- I, I want to hear what you think, so definitely leave a comment down below. And um, yeah, besides that, you're probably going to want to stay tuned for more videos like this. And we also have a ton of other tech-related videos, um, anything related to code, single board computers, building robots, electronics. Um, you know, anything server related, hardware related, software related, um, a ton of tech related comment content, uh, we're, we're putting out and we have a ton of stuff, um, in the works. Um, and, uh, yeah. And if you, you were specifically just looking for rabbit MQ stuff, we have a few more video. We, we have, uh, a few more videos coming out soon and probably a ton more in the future. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, you're, you're going to want to see our code examples and, and how you actually, uh, work with rabbit MQ. And we have a lot of administrative rabbit, r- administrative stuff for RabbitMQ also. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, you're going to want to hit the little bell icon just to make sure you get an alert when our new, any time a, a new video gets published. That way you can kind of, um, you know, you, you know, stay on top of things and be alerted to when something new comes out. Um, o- always always kind of nice. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it for today. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this and we'll see you next time.